Hello, and welcome to the inaugural episode of The Sulfuric Secrets, a horror podcast produced by Beyond Two Worlds. We start this podcast with one major world event, an event that at the time was seemingly of very little significance, but eventually became the reshaper of human consciousness and the global order. The Sulfuric Secrets is a fictionalized account of what events might have transpired with just a few key changes in the historical timeline set against the backdrop of an alternative world filled with magic, alchemy, and the occult. Sometimes hiding in plain sight, but sometimes, like rotten meat, you'd be surprised at the army of botflies that sit beneath the surface if you dare to dig a little deeper. This episode is called Mr. Rollo and the Flayed Man. Please be advised that this episode contains mature content that might not be appropriate for all audiences. August 16th, 1858. Two events of monumental significance to the development of humankind took place. One visible, one hidden, and they were both connected. The first monumental event was the laying of the world's first transatlantic telegraph cable on the ocean's floor. These copper submarine cables were a breakthrough in the global communication system, a revolutionary innovation that could connect continents through the mysterious and modern art of Morse code. This is the ancient symbol of enduring life. It is the modern symbol for copper, one of the most useful, versatile and durable of all the metals. Since the dawn of civilization, copper has been an essential element in the technological advance of mankind. And paradoxically, after all the effort to find and recover the metal, many of its uses require that it be concealed again and perform its work unseen. Hidden behind walls and panels, Buried in the ground and under the sea. Covered by housings and hoods. Hidden sometimes even in the deep reaches of space. Copper is the key to power and communication. By the consensus of all historical accounts, it was a piece of shit. Queen Victoria's 90-word message to the then US president took 16 hours to send at 3,200 kilometers. It took more than 10 failed attempts, exceeding 12 months. It was a failure that was hard fought for, but this was the first domino that eventually led to the restructuring of the entire global order. This submarine cable was a literal and figurative connection between the United States and the United Kingdom. After 150 years of bitter fighting between the two countries, it was a welcome change. The two countries put aside their differences, and together they funded the Atlantic Telegraph Company. The two countries shared a common language, religion, liberalist political perspective, and now, broken telegraph cable. By 1946, Winston Churchill called the alliance between the two the special relationship, and it all started with a cable. You might be asking what the second event of August 16th, 1858 must have been to be as important as the event that started modern geopolitics. Well, The second major event 
of August 16th, 1858 didn't have the same amount of fanfare. It wasn't in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, but it was underground. A small basement somewhere within the old world borders of Wallachia and Moldavia. Above the ground is a lush plain typical for the area. In just a few decades, the wet summers and cloudy winters will launch rows of cornfields that will help to hide a large copper grate in the center of the field. Copper was in plentiful supply at the time. It was what made up the telegraph cable between the UK and the US. Seven thin interwoven strands that were barely a fifth of a centimeter in thickness. But this telegraph cable was so heavy that it sunk to the ocean floor. Mr. Rollo was certain that he also wanted copper for his basement. A copper entrance, copper lining the walls, copper lining the floor and ceiling of the antechamber, and copper in the underground bunker. Money was not a concern. The basement itself needed to be hermetically sealed. That is, there could be no moisture in the air. There could be no air in the air. Why? Well, it takes an exceedingly precise hand, but if you carve up a human in just the right way, you could partition the pieces and its constituent organs around a small space and keep that person alive indefinitely. It's really more of a recommendation than a biological law that organs need to border skin or that skin needs to imprison veins. Mr. Rollo was trained and an expert in a number of arts, including the anatomical method. One of the other arts that Mr. Rollo was adept in was alchemy. Everything we know of modern chemistry comes from the ancient alchemists' experimentations. Alchemy itself has long since been abandoned as we learnt everything we needed to know from it. Mr. Rollo, however, didn't. He had plenty more to learn from alchemy. Over the years and his various travels around the continent, he put his practice to work in the copper basement. As his identity is still unknown, I like to call the person in the copper basement the flayed man. A namesake earned for the carpet of skin that sits spread out in the middle of the basement. Directly above the skin carpet floats his still beating heart. And like the most exquisite spiderweb, the veins, ventricles, and atria flow outwards as if underwater. Mr. Rollo had stretched the organs out like a compass. If the flayed man was ever fed, the food would traverse the length of the entire room. The esophagus sits in the north, descends, and then bends eastward to reach the stomach, which pointed northeast. The small intestine coiled outward with room to breathe like a snake of pure energy. It explores the room in no particular direction before it settles at its end in the east of the basement. Close by, pointing south, the liver, gallbladder and pancreas sit together like a group of old friends enjoying the setting sun. The large intestine stretches outward, eventually pointing west. The lungs are nearby with enough of a gap so that you can see the rhythmic dancing of the heart as it beats blood around the room through the mess of veins that are suspended from the ceiling to the floor. Although impressive, the digestive system isn't as active as the lungs or the heart. They pulsated like a panicked watch, ticking madly when they were first placed in the copper basement. Despite his skill, Mr. Rollo was uncertain as to whether it would actually work. August 16th, 1858, was a day of radical experimentation. Following this day, the submarine telegraph cable idea caught on. Fourteen years later, every continent on Earth was connected. All the world's continents except Antarctica, of course. A century later, the antiquated cables were replaced with the modern 1.2 million kilometer fiber optic network of 406 cables. 
Now today, through these underwater cables, information is sent at about 208 terabytes a second. About the same speed and processing power of a human brain. Through these metal strands, that are thinner than a human hair, these cables make up the physical part of what we know as the internet. You've probably heard something about the fiber optic network. Every so often there will be a puff piece in the media about a confused shark that bites on one of them. But the network never goes down. It's too complex and interconnected to do that. It's like a life form that regenerates. But it all started with that first, admittedly disappointing submarine cable. It was like the development of the first neuron, eventually replicating and creating a complex network. The ocean itself became like the meninges, a spongy layer that protects the human brain. I'm imagining at this point you probably have some questions about the flayed man. I'll answer what I can. Firstly, what did this man do to deserve this? Probably nothing. Even if he did, I don't know how you could rile someone up badly enough to justify it. There are stories about how far worse is destined for us if we don't pray to this, that, or the other. But I imagine that any god that feels like doing that was mad about something else to begin with. Secondly, who is the Flayed Man? Well, I hate to let you down, but no one really. And more importantly, if you've been paying attention, you're probably thinking that this is great and all. But across Mr. Rollo's fine little collection, he's forgotten one of the most important pieces. The Flayed Man wouldn't be able to continue breathing however laboured it is now if he didn't have his brain. So where exactly is the brain of the Flayed Man in this horrid equation? Well, I did mention that the two great events that took place on August 16th, 1858 were connected. You've just listened to episode one of The Sulfuric Secrets. Believe me when I tell you that we've just scratched the surface of the mystery of Mr. Rollo, the Copper Basement, and the Flayed Men. In the next episode, we're going to explore more unknown depths, both those of the subconscious and the mysteries of the ocean. If you liked this episode, be sure to support this project through the Between Two Worlds Patreon link, which is provided below. Until then, thank you, and have a good night.